What comes to your mind when you hear the word precious? Some people might picture themselves in a dream car or a luxurious villa. Women yearning for jewelry might be mesmerized by the sight of a chest full of rare earth metals. But for many people with a passing interest in astronomy or space-related things, it's a planet festooned with gemstones such as rubies and emeralds. While such planets were once a work of fiction, scientists have now testified that such worlds do actually exist. So much so that gemstones literally fall every second from the sky in abundance on such planets. But when we begin to compare the number of minerals on our planet to theirs, we quickly realize that our world is a pauper compared to these cosmic fat cats. Scientists have tasked the James Webb Telescope to seek out such jackpot planets and finally understand why certain planets have all the fun, while others are left to cry with sad eyes. In this video, we'll see how the James Webb Telescope will accomplish this task. What will the researchers be looking for, and how does everything affect you personally? So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Take a look at this image. This is an image of Messier 74, a galaxy located 30 million light years away from us. At first sight, there isn't anything intriguing about it. But now, take a look at this image. This is also a photo of the same galaxy, but using the latest and most advanced space observatory. That's right, this monstrous, eerily glowing maelstrom was captured by the newly launched James Webb Space Telescope. For those of you who are curious, the first photo was taken by the master of space imaging, the Hubble Telescope, in 2003. The image shows a galaxy in a nearly new and flawless condition. And to put the cherry on top, according to mathematical models, this galaxy's spirals are so symmetric and aesthetically pleasing that scientists awarded it the perfect spiral title. Although many space enthusiasts still call it the Phantom Galaxy. But why does the James Webb image of the same galaxy look so different after all? It is because the JWST had some other plan. The mid-infrared range camera on the Webb telescope sets it apart from the Hubble image by highlighting the cosmic gases and dusty threads that block the light of most stars. The image is also made more dynamic by the presence of star-forming regions and the aftermath of supernova explosions. The $10 billion space telescope is capable of producing such magnificent photos because, unlike the Hubble telescope, which collects photographs in predominantly visible light, Webb captures images in primarily infrared region, exposing more details about the objects in those images than ever before. Due to this additional benefit, JWST has an edge over Hubble in that it can observe objects that formed much more earlier than Hubble can objects explicitly that only appeared 100 million years after the Big Bang. In other words, for the first time ever, we will be able to observe what took place barely 100 million years after the Big Bang. The telescope, which has been fully operational since July 11th, has already astounded many scientists with numerous new and unexpected discoveries. It already found an exoplanet containing one of the essential elements for life, captured a photograph of a portion of the sky one-fifth the size of the moon, and provided a previously unseen view of Jupiter's rings. But this time, scientists are turning their attention to objects in space that are nothing short of planetary treasure chests. Since the euphoria around Jupiter's diamond rain has faded since its discovery, scientists now want the JWST to discover a planet that rains gemstones. Yes, you heard me right. Scientists want to see vaporized clouds of gems blowing around an exoplanet this time. Astronomers are hoping for cloudy skies in many exoplanetary atmospheres as the James Webb Space Telescope soon turns its attention to finding worlds laden with vaporized rock and crystals such as corundum and perovskite, which form gems on Earth. But there's a problem. It's already too challenging to view these little dots of light since these exoplanets are thousands, sometimes even millions of light years away. So. How can we even begin to investigate their atmosphere? The Solution at Hand Scientists came up with a life hack for this one. Take Earth, for example. Imagine observing Earth from light years away. You wouldn't be able to see people from such a distance, and you wouldn't be able to see any city lights or hear the noises we're making. But if you somehow are told that the atmosphere contains gases such as nitrogen and oxygen, you could confirm the presence of a life form or, potentially, ecosystems. Clouds reveal a lot about the chemistry of the atmosphere. 
After all, it's a separate science known as nephology. So scientists hope they might solve the problem if JWST could somehow detect the light reflected off the planet's clouds and relay it back to ground-based centers so that they could carefully analyze the various wavelengths of that light in precise detail using spectrographic techniques. But then the devil's in the details. To find a planet with jewels showering down on its surface, one must first look for a world that is very hot. And by hot, we mean extremely hot. Gemstones need an incredibly high temperature to vaporize. Take ruby, for instance. Ruby has a boiling point of roughly 3,000 degrees Celsius. For comparison, the Earth's core has a temperature that is just a little bit higher, at 5,200 degrees Celsius, which steadily drops as we ascend to the mantle, crust, and finally the atmosphere, where the average global temperature is just around 14 degrees Celsius. Our gem of a planet would require scorching temperatures of roughly 2,000 degrees Celsius or 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit to support gemstones in their vapor state. Common sense says that such a hot planet should be found circling in close proximity to its parent star. This is because the star's heat will cause the planet to burn up like crazy. Scientists even have a name for such incredibly hot planets. They are known as hot Jupiters. Hot Jupiters are gas giants that circle their stars so close that rocky elements, minerals, and metals can exist as vapor in their atmospheres. Scientists expect that by using JWST, they will be able to capture the light reflected off such a planet's atmosphere and examine its chemical makeup. When a ray of light is spotted, it is possible to estimate the exoplanet's atmospheric composition by splitting the light into wavelengths that correspond to different colors. Scientists have already used this method to determine the composition of planets using the Hubble, Kepler, and other ground-based observatories. For example, in 2017, when astronomers at the European Southern Observatory in Chile pointed their telescopes at the Phoenix constellation, they discovered a titanium oxide signal in the atmosphere of an exoplanet known as WASP-19b. Three years later, the same telescope noticed iron vapor on WASP-76b's day side. Many hot Jupiters are tidally locked, which means they always expose the same face to their star, causing their day sides to become extremely hot. In the case of WASP-76b, the day side reaches a scorching 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 2,200 degrees Celsius. But the planet's night side is also a whopping 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,500 degrees Celsius, though that's cool enough for iron to condense and precipitate out as a rain of molten metal. These discoveries instilled a kernel of hope in the scientific community. If a ground-based telescope can detect such wonders, astronomers can only wait what discoveries the James Webb Telescope will disclose. WASP-96b was chosen as the target of James Webb's inaugural test because it was thought to have no atmosphere at all. To their amazement, the JWST found not only clouds of carbon and oxygen, but also water molecules that could indicate the presence of extraterrestrial life. All of this is made possible by the near-infrared spectrograph aboard the JWST, which has high-resolution vision and is able to directly detect these minerals as clouds by spectroscopically determining their composition. With the deployment of this spectrograph, scientists will take a significant leap forward in the exploration of some unusual worlds. The atmospheres of smaller, rocky exoplanets will also come under scrutiny from JWST. Researchers will measure the composition of the atmosphere on 55 Cantry E, which is a super-Earth with eight times the mass of our planet. Scientists also hope to determine whether it is hot enough to rain lava. Webb will also examine the seven planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system, checking each one for an atmosphere as it scans the entire system. Astronomers will pay particularly close attention to TRAPPIST-1e, which is the most Earth-like planet in the neighborhood. If it is livable, then its atmosphere, especially its clouds, may provide indications of such. On Earth, clouds play a crucial role in controlling temperature. They have a significant role in determining Earth's climate. It makes sense that clouds might also have a vital role in the composition of an exoplanet's atmosphere. The better we understand general cloud dynamics, the more we comprehend how clouds support the survival of flora and fauna. Only time will tell what the JWST can offer with its skill set. Uh, by the way, what are your thoughts about this mission? Do you think that discovering such planets rich in precious stones and metals close to Earth could potentially start a new cosmic treasure or gold rush? And do you feel that governments should find such projects of space exploration? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Give us a like and share it with friends. The James Webb Space Telescope's cosmic journey has barely started.
Stay tuned here by subscribing to avoid losing out on anything. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. I hope you really liked it. Consider subscribing to the channel if you liked the video. And as always, thanks for watching.